Hey, I'm Tucker Balch. I'm in Chicago with uh, Tom Sosnoff. Tom is a, uh, uh, is a trader, a former market maker, uh, has played significant influence uh, on brokerages and, and computer science and trading. Uh, we're here with him at uh, Tasty Trade. Tom, tell us a little, about, a little bit about what is Tasty Trade. What are you doing right now? Tasty Trade is my um, uh, vision of alternative financial content. So what we're doing is we're creating a financial network, which is currently, actually it's the fastest growing financial network in the world right now. Tasty Trade is crazy, but um, we focus on derivatives and we focus on an alternative strategic approach to investing. We basically believe that the individual investor has been underserved. And mm -hmm. our mission is to um, be an advocate and to support the consumer slash investor and to bring that self-directed investing. The, the, the true um, uh, power of self-directed investing, which is driven by strategy and logic, to individual investors. Cool, cool. Um, the, what I want to focus on uh, this segment is uh, what was it like before computers pervaded the market? I know that... Uh, I know that you were a trader and a market yeah. maker uh, before everything became elect electronified, if that's the right word. Uh, but take us back to um, to the to the trading floor. Sure. And and you know, suppose I'm an investor and I call my broker and you know I want to execute a trade. How did that flow through the network? How did it get to you? What happened? What was that like? I was a trader on the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange for about 20 years. From 1980 to about 2000, I mean, give or take, you know, a couple of months, um, and I ran my own kind of little little prop firm. That's a proprietary trading firm. We were market makers. We traded our own capital, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so the question is, an order goes from um, a customer decides they want to do something. They reach out to their broker. However, they did whether it was in the 80s, it was over the telephone. If it mm -hmm. was in the later 90s, it may have been via some electronic system or whatever. Um, the order was then transmitted to the floor and then executed and facilitated by a broker on but the exchange get, floor. How did, it get, uh, how did it get to the trader? Would, would, would they be on the phone? or how did... It was a combination of either a wire service or straight through the phone. It depended on, it, the, the, the determination was based on the size of the order and the product that it was. Mm, mm. So if it was a large order and a large product, it may have been called directly into the pit. Mm -hmm. And if it was a smaller order, it may have been sent out on a ticket. It was printed at some booth, or you know, and then a runner ran it out, or it may have been. Um, uh, for the most part, it was mo the larger orders were all called in and then handwritten up. So uh, on the floor, uh, and 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 we're going to go to the op options exchange uh, tomorrow. What should we look for? Who's doing what? Nothing. Basically? There's nothing left. Nothing. Okay. It's <laughs> a. It's a um, the option exchange now is basically um, went from two, three thousand people down to you know two or three hundred, mm -hmm. um, or mm -hmm. four hundred, whatever it is. Is the actual participants on the floor? There's only two truly active crowds left. One is the volatility index, and the other is the S and P five hundred. Mm -hmm. um, when I was there, it was an incredible options on the S &P options. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, options on the S and P five hundred. Uh, the whole options. index. Yeah, stock options. There's futures options as well. They don't trade at the SIBO. Where you're going, there's stock options mm -hmm. and on the S&P 500, and there's also um, derivatives, which are options, on the um, VIX, the volatility right, index right, of the right, S&P right, 500. Right. The 95% the, the of the trade has moved off the floor. It's all server-driven. Right, right. uh, now, um, still going back to, you know, before computers, um, what was the interchange like? You know, there were there were two parties to a trade, and sure. presumably a market maker. How did that How did that happen? Well, there was a there was a separation of church and state between broker and market maker. So in the equity marketplace, the broker could represent the order. That he was the facilitator, and the market. Um, I'm sorry, the broker would represent the order, and the market maker was the facilitator, the, the liquidity provider, and the two could not trade. One, somebody could not represent a customer order and facil and execute for themselves mm -hmm. on the same at the same time. So so one one would handle the execution and the other would handle the facilitation. Okay. Um, and it was it was a process of it was a lot of good faith. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Everything was done on somebody's word. It worked exceptionally well. It was inefficient in the sense that um, it was inefficient time wise. 
because right now, if you write an order to any one of the exchanges on any one of the liquid products, you should be filled within milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's efficiency. And efficiency mm -hmm. obviously leads to uh, better markets and, um, and more liquidity, better markets, and um, uh, just an, more opportunity. So the, 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 the people running things essentially made it less liquid and, and maybe less, le you know, certainly less efficient than it is. Well, far less liquid and far less efficient, yeah. Right. I mean, anytime you can, anytime you can commoditize something, it becomes far more efficient. So, uh, 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 racing forward, and uh, you know, uh, you know, a market maker is always a market maker. But uh, 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 how uh, part of what you know we're teaching students is uh, how different parties make money in the sure. in the uh, in the overall transaction. Sure. So, uh, uh, how does a market maker make money, and 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 do they take risk? And okay. you know what what happens there? So so there's three parties that want to be paid. Um, forget about the forget about the principal risk at this point. There's three parties that want to get paid along the course of a transaction taking place. First is the exchange that mm -hmm. that for 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 housing clearing facilitating everything they get a small exchange fee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next person that wants to be paid is the broker, and the broker gets paid based on just executing the order. So that's just their transaction fees, their commissions. The, the market maker gets paid, if you call it that, based on the amount of theoretical edge that they're able to lock up in the trade. So for example, if the market on a trade is, just, let's just say the market is X wide, that X has some, has some edge so, so you mean over between the, the bid and ask? Right, there's a theoretical price that sits in the middle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for example, if the theoretical price is $1, mm -hmm. and the market maker is able to sell it at 105, they theoretically make a nickel. Mm. If they're able to buy something at 95 cents, they theoretically make a nickel. And that's the edge. And now they also, but they pay for the right to be there to have that edge. Mm. And they pay for the right to use capital, to borrow capital, to, to make that trade as well. So it's not like it's free. It's very expensive to be that market maker. Oh, interesting. Now, um, uh, you were a market maker, yes. right? Um, uh, did you have to take risk, or was it a? Of course. It, it, give me an example. What? What? When? When were you the most nervous as a as a market maker? Well, you never get nervous. It's like anything else. I mean, you know, you're a professor. Do you get nervous in front of your class? Of course not. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you get used to doing it. Mm -hmm. But um, so you're never nervous. You're always risk becomes part of your job. You go to work every day. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you go work at a coal mine, you know, you get. You're at risk, right? Right. Um, so, but I'm imagining that uh, to facilitate to provide liquidity, you might have to enter a trade for which you don't have an immediate counterparty, and oh, and all the time, can, all the know, time. Uh, so, how would you handle that? Well, process? you get paid for not having an immediate counterparty. So, in other words, if you're going to make, let's just say, the most liquid underlying is is um, is Apple, just as an example, the the Apple marketplace is so tight. That and so efficient that you get you make less money for that efficiency. Mm -hmm. If the markets are wider and less efficient, you get to you get to make the spreads are bigger, and so you get paid more money for that inefficiency. Remember, this is a this is kind of the last frontier of pure capitalism. <laughs> you don't take risk that's not you know there's there's a level of reward associated which with each level of risk, and it's only when you step outside of that and force something. That you put yourself in a position that's not, you know, healthy. So, uh, where are the opportunities? Uh, and I, I suppose you mean, when you say opportunity, you mean opportunities for um, humans uh, as opposed to machines. Is that what you mean? Not, not really. The the opportunity to, you're talking about today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the opportunity today for market makers is just it's transactional volume. So you make money just based on the number of occurrences that take place and the amount of you know the amount of edge you're able to Lots get of little bits that's right and th that's the way you prefer it too just like Vegas mm -hmm. they make money in Las Vegas when when somebody plays a lot they don't make right, right. if you bet a hundred thousand dollars one time they don't like that in Vegas because it's not it's that's not the same odds. Table maximums. that's right that's why they have table maximums and if you bet a hundred thousand dollars over the course of a couple of hours they love you right right that's right, the big right. difference yeah. same with traders so uh, Let's, let's, let's close this segment on uh, before the age of computers, and uh, we'll, we'll be back with uh, Tom Sosnoff in, uh, in just a moment.